Yeah, he's pretty funny. I like him. He's a big guy. Big yeah. guy. Good shit. Big guy. Hey, big guy. Welcome to episode 23 of The Glug. 23! Who's that guy? Best Glug episode ever! Probably oh, not yet. We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Andy from Starving Artist Brewery is with us today. How's it going? Uh, so rad. We're gonna have some of his deliciousness, uh, sample through some of his beers, some of his new stuff, like a lager. Mm -hmm. A lager. I, I like it a lot. <laughs> like I'm a really lot. bad at yeah. that. I'm not gonna do that again, sorry guys. <laughs> I'll stick to making beer. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should talk about uh, we should talk about you. We should have a little backstory here. I'm sure there's some people watching that probably don't know who's, what Starving Artist Brewery All right. is, who you so, are, and what you're about. Uh, Starving Artist is uh, currently a little production only brewery um, in Ludington. For now. Uh, we'll get on that later, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, hold on. I did bring something, though. Uh, the, one of the most important things about Starving Artists is if you're going to taste with us, you got to go Starving Artist style. Tiny cups. This is how. <laughs> this is how you taste at Starving Artist. Yeah. You gotta have the tiny cups. But Andy, we're not at Starving I mean, Artist. Oh. So why don't we drink out of big pint glasses? Okay. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I've been to Starving Artist, and as soon as Andy took that cup out, I went, I know that little cup. I know that little cup. Yeah. I know it. Tiny cups. Tiny cups. We do tiny cups. You know what comes with tiny cups? Tiny problems. <laughs> Let's make friends. But ice cream beer isn't one. Ice cream beer is never a problem. Uh, it, no, it is a problem. <laughs> I'll admit it. Sorry about that, guys. It was. It, it was, was a great it. experiment. Yes. Uh, so yeah, Starving Artist, uh, we, we started in, uh, we opened in June of 2005, so we're almost to four years now, which is crazy. Uh, a lot's happened in that. Um, we're almost exactly one year from the time that I teased everybody on April Fool's Day and said that we were gonna open a tap room. Um, and now we are, so maybe, we'll, yeah, we'll see. Um, so we focus on just all sorts of different beers, um, anything that kind of sp spikes my interest. And uh, we've had a lot of help. We have some great people, you know, that have, that have been there along the way that have helped us get where we're at. And, um, but yeah, it's in a little barn with little, tiny cups. Tiny cups. Little barn, <laughs> tiny cups. It's obviously a passion of yours. Right. You love yes. what you're doing. I love it. I freaking love it. That's fantastic. Yep. yep. I love that when you go to Starving Artists, you're like, yeah, I got to cross the railroad tracks to get there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep, well, we're on that side of the tracks. That side of the tracks. <laughs> yep. That was for like, that intro is for like the 1% that are watching this that don't know who you are. But for everybody else that's watching, I'm sure they all want to know. When are we gonna get your beer every day, bro? It's it's close. It's close. I guess we're we just waiting. Cheers, bro. What All is right. This? Cheers. So this is our brand new uh, hoppy lager. It's called Invasive Species. Um, it was born through. Uh huh. It doesn't suck. Beer is good too. Jesus. <laughs> the name is fantastic. Wow. Mm. I'm pretty excited about this beer. Uh, the this beer was born through a project that it's the second year that we donated a uh, day as a brewer to a local charity in, in Ludington uh, to Cove. And the winner of the auction gets to come in, design the beer, brew the beer, name the beer, and then we kind of see what happens. So the guy that came in, uh, Marty, wanted to design something that we've never done. And I'm like, hey, we've never done a lager. What if we do some kind of lager and do some kind of crazy twist on it? So we decided a hoppy lager was where we were gonna go. So it's a uh, 4.9% with uh, Citra and Idaho 7. We could drink like a million of these. <laughs> I, could, I could seriously just be like, oh, I yep. could drink a million tiny cups. Yeah. Good God, that's good. It's refreshing, isn't it? Yeah. It's fun. Nice and crisp. Yeah. Good job. And it's a lager. Like I wouldn't, mm, I'm. Dude, what got you in the brewing? Um, I, right out of dropping out of college, I, uh, Started working at James Port Brewing Company in Ludington back in uh, 2000 when they opened. Um, and then Tom Buchanan. I was going to say, you probably that, had a pretty good mentor. Yep. Tom Buchanan kind of sparked my love for, for craft beer. Uh, became a beer geek. Then uh, went and got my beer judge certification. Uh, took the BJCP test. And uh, that was not a fun test. 
Doesn't sound like a fun test. No, no I failed it miserably. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I want to take a BJ so, test. <laughs> I failed the BJ test. Failed that BJ test again, boys. <laughs> We have to keep going back. Who was your judge? <laughs> well, he was a real Richard. Yeah. Yeah. The judge was a real son of a bitch. <laughs> hey, I hope you like to have fun. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, just been a beer geek for a long time. And um, then a home brewer for, for a while. And then we uh, owned an art gallery downtown Ludington for 10 years and kind of ran its course for us and my wife suggested opening a brewery in the in the barn so the rest is history keep her yeah around. oh yeah, yeah. she's a keeper she's, she's a you keeper. know what you should do you should open a yeah. brewery in the barn have your friends over and drink beer <laughs> that'd be great <laughs> so far i don't think she's re regretted it no yeah. I, I would highly doubt that <laughs> I, I would not think that she would regret so far she all. still likes it so that's good yeah. dude your beers are absolutely amazing uh, I'm sure you get that all the time, but I, I, I think it should be said. It should be said on camera for sure. I have outside the ice cream here. <laughs> These, your beers are <laughs> phenomenal. I haven't had one that I didn't like. I haven't had one that, that, at least in my opinion, doesn't score really high. Yeah. I love every single one of them. Right. When we first opened the store here, the amount of people that came in or that come in still and say, do you have any starving artist beers? It, dude, it's amazing. <laughs> and you're doing it right, though, man, because I... I feel like you know there are stories in the in the beer world of the guy or gal that you know was a home brewer, had some successes with some beers, and their friends were like, "Oh, this is really good stuff," and then they were like, eh. "But then slowly, you know, you kind of got into the uh, to the beer festival scene yeah. before you really got into the full on scale brewing, right?" Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, we um, so. When we opened, we were we were nano nano. Like we were, I mean, we were on a three barrel system, but we were only brewing, you know, maybe, you know, six barrels uh, max. Max capacity would have been six barrels a week that we that we could produce back then. So, um, and low and slow. I mean, we erased at the beginning. We erased our address off of Google. We had to go through the process of actually removing our address, and we became kind of a ghost brewery. And if you if you kind of stumbled upon upon our barn, it was a who sent you because you had to know it was there. Nice. You know, and then That's we awesome. and then yeah, pe people somebody dropped it's like a prohibition. <laughs> yeah. 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 I heard that my yeah yeah I heard that you know and so it was really fun at the beginning to teach people when they'd come up like hey is this a brewery like yeah. why. Like, yeah. like, oh, sorry, no, we'll, we'll leave. Oh, like, no, 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 come on in. <laughs> you got like a German Shepherd barking at the gate. Yeah, I wanted, arr, I wanted arr. to put up like a trespassers will be shot si on sight <laughs> sign and like beware of dog. I don't have a gun or a dog, but it would be really funny to watch yeah. people. Like, <laughs> really it's, funny to watch people come up to the barn and yeah. <laughs> like this dude needs a beer because he is brave. Yeah. <laughs> you, do have, you do have a very like a homey you know, atmosphere out there. Oh yeah, I feel like we're, we're not. That shows up there, they feel like they're at home. Yeah, yeah, we're not, and we're not pretty. We never. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever accused us of being pretty, and so, uh, and I like to say, like to everybody who comes in, I hope this is the worst beer you ever have for me, because I'm always trying to tweak them. Always, we're probably the not the most consistent brewery, but it's not. It's more because I'm always like, what can I do to this to make it better? You said that you know, to me. Stop one, doing night, that. one day when I was out there, you're like, <laughs> usually the first goes the like best. Year, like, you're like, a year from now, I want this beer to be the worst beer on my list. Right. And I'm sitting there drinking this beer going, this is like one of the best beers I've ever <laughs> had. Where the hell is this guy going with this? Like, I don't get it. Like, it's a challenge. Yeah. It's because that's the love of beer, right? You know, yeah. that's, the love, that's the love of the craft. That's that's why I wanted to you know when we opened, it was more about if I could impress the guys who were in the industry, especially the guys who have been in the industry for a long time, by what we're doing and that we're small and that we're only focused on making a quality product. It was uh, if I can if I can get them right. <laughs> so anyways, yeah. Anyways, so yeah. yeah, we make beer. I would I would put this lager in anybody's hand. Me and too. Challenge them to go. I don't know like that. I punch yeah. him in the face. <laughs> Square off. I'm, like, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. You don't like it's a it. Real... Do you like your front teeth? <laughs> Get off my lawn. You just change my lawn. Right. You need yeah. a sweater. Andy's beer is <laughs> American. Get, Get on my lawn. lawn.
and a hound dog, hound dog. and a rocking chair. Yep. <laughs> Shotgun bullet, rock salt. <laughs> so what's next? What's next? For, what's the next plan for starving artists? Oh, let's see. Let's get into it. Uh, all right, we're going there. It. Okay, wait. Let's so we should have there. another. Yeah, beer. we should probably do another beer for this one. Yeah. Um, we need some you gotta learn how to pour first. Well, you gotta learn how to pour that beer, boy. <laughs> we'll drink it. That's beer. Ah, that's beer. What are we on to next? Oh, let's see. Andy, you pick. Andy, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Pretty much all of them. I wanna know what this tastes like. This is almost three years old now, so. So tell the people what we're gonna sample. This is Shocky Luli, which is the closest we could get in Swiss German to chocolate stupid. Um, and so I guess I think it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I think it translates to one driven to insanity by chocolate in Swiss German. Um, and so there's a brewery uh, in Switzerland, uh, Barfus Brewery. I totally butchered that. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm so uh, Barefoot Brewing Company. I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> yeah. And so they, uh, we met them. And he was kind of making fun of our redneck brewery. And I'm like, yeah, it's, but we like it. And he said, no, I'm making fun of it because ours is the same way in Switzerland. And so uh, they come back once a year. This was the first beer we brewed with them. They brought over um, a lot of Swiss chocolate with them. Uh, one was salted milk chocolate. One was 90% cacao dark. Um, cacao. And so they said, how much do you want to put? <laughs> <laughs> Was that the illegal shit? It's a, what's that? What was the illegal no, stuff? No, this is, this, this is the one that I don't even, I think you can get ruby chocolate in, the, in America now, but at the time you couldn't. So Smugglers. that was, that was, yeah, smuggled that in. Um, so. I don't want to know how. I don't yeah. want to know how. This is a <laughs> imperial chocolate milk stand, right? <laughs> Eric Bendo. Uh, I'm going to, ooh, it still has ooh. bubbles. That's a good okay. sign, That's a right? great yeah. sign. So I'm so sure. This, this I'm beer, sure it's oxidized. So this like, beer has not seen the light of day in oh three years. It's been in my cellar. It's the last bottle I've got. So I'm kind of sad about Holy it. Holy crap. And happy because I really wanted to know how it held up. <laughs> like, Holy crap. But there's I'm, no more. I'm, I'm, there's no more. And I'm sharing it with these dumbasses. <laughs> it's, like, you, guys, you guys waited around for me. We were late. I so like. I could have <laughs> saved this for my wife and our 20th anniversary, but I'm going to give it to these jackals. Or I could have saved it for the Swiss Brewery. Okay, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think they might have one laying around. Uh, All right, so yeah, it might be oxidized. It smells good still. As the lady out front said, that's a dark one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, and you're never going to be able to get this. You're welcome. Holy shit. Not anymore. So the reason we called it Chocolate Stupid oh, is because it's everything we were doing amazing. that day, like, we were... Like stupid. saying, we were saying like, this is stupid. We were pushing the, the limits of our system. We were pushing the limits of the beer. We were pushing the limits of everything. So, so we came up with chocolate stupid. And then there's a big story about the guy that we, the shaki luli that we made up on the back that talks about uh, the Swiss Alps. And he blows his horn at, the, at dusk every night and anybody in range of his Alp horn has an undying urge to eat chocolate. And so we, we captured the essence of his Alphorn and put it into the beer so everybody can live happily ever after. And <laughs> what I hear in my mind is I'm gonna need more. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Just save it for, uh, for after. Mm -hmm. I would be, di be doing a disservice to the woman that I love if I didn't save Ooh, a little bit of right. this beer. I knew tiny cups would be let her have a taste of that. Helpful. Cause that a save it for later beer. Like. Uh, Man, this is good. I, I mean, little, I mean, it, I feel like it is a little oxidized. I get a little sweet cherry in it. Yeah, yeah. This is really good. I mean, for for its age, it held up. That's pretty cool. What was the ABV on it? Ten and a half. Oh, hell yeah, man. Yeah, because it didn't get like more. Like, it, like you can't. Well, no, you it's can't, not boozy either. No, at all. It's so good. Well, yeah. I mean, okay, I can't. I can't. For its age, I'm pretty happy with that. You know, with the tops, the tops here on this probably didn't help it, but I mean, it's, dude, this is a damn good beer, dude. <laughs> I'm really happy. Yeah, this was, this was, this whole, this whole collaboration that we get to do with these guys every year is really cool. Um, 
and so it's always chocolate derived. So this year, um, this was a this one was a the shocky the shocky Vibli, which is chocolate wifey. <laughs> we were trying um, to pronounce. <laughs> It's been called many things. Shuggly wobbly. Usually, like it, it was on tap as number one. So, um, like it was Shucky Beebly are also known as number one. Number one. <laughs> so, like well, I'll take I, number one. I got two of those sitting in my garage fridge right now, and I'm like, it's a Shuck Wibbly. <laughs> hey, that's close. Whatever. It should last forever. Yeah. Or at least yeah. a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, there's some really I mean, interesting if that's attempts been at it. For three years, <laughs> and it's that good. I, I'll let that sit for a while. Can you remember what that tasted like three years ago? Um, yes. I remember. I remember it coming out of the bright tank, and calling and uh, a couple buddies. I'm like, it's really good. <laughs> we still get excited every time. Every time I like the lager, you know, yeah. every like it's still like Christmas. You're like, yeah, like like nervous Christmas. Like you gotta got a present from your aunt and you're like this could go either way you know and <laughs> so, so but you open it up and you're like yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> all right boys let's reel it in what, uh, what's, right, hap what's happening sorry. at the brewery all right so uh right now we are um in the middle of um uh, a process to start serving pints to people who visit the brewery. Awesome. Um, that sounds amazing. Yeah. That sounds really, like something that should really be fun. automatic. But limited yeah. pints, because if you've ever been to our brewery, you'll understand that it, it is our home. You know, so we don't want it to be a bar. We don't want it to you know, uh, operate not, like a tap room. You don't want people passing out in your yard. Yeah. No. No. We'd really prefer that to not happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, so, yeah. no. Like, no. No. So, Except me. We... I mean, I'd make an exception. Again. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Yeah. I would rather you pass out in my yard than oh, drive away. Eric. Yeah, there you go. Right? Eric so, had two beers. Like, good job, you didn't drive. Eric's Thank sleeping you. on the tracks again. <laughs> get him off there. <laughs> so um, he was trying to get back to the other side of the tracks. Yeah, <laughs> never made it. So, so right, yeah. So right now we're in the middle of just uh, the process of of trying to get there and. Um, uh, going through the zoning process has been interesting and challenging, but we'll what are the challenges that you're coming to um, with the zoning? We just got denied our, our variance uh, that we were seeking through the Zoning Board of Appeals for uh, to be allowed to operate on a five acre parcel instead of a 10 acre parcel um, with language that was written um, and approved uh, in June of 2018 so this language was uh, there was no real agribusiness or uh, no real agribusiness or microbrewery section for anything like us when we opened so we were allowed to open under a home-based business by the zoning board okay um, so the zoning board this time was very enthusiastic um, the they were they were uh, but their hands were tied and that they needed us to go to the zoning board of appeals to get the variances and then they said you know that they they seemed very positive overly positive and that they would that that we would have no problems as long as we got those variances um so uh, we went to the zoning board of appeals on wednesday um they did not share their enthusiasm well, <laughs> so, so they told you no yeah yeah it was a it was a blatant no yeah oh, because, yeah. because yeah. you don't have 10 acres you only have five right right yep so and was it so yes you because have, of that so, Basically, like you have to have ten acres of land to be able to serve people. Being under there. under section seventeen point oh three, agribusiness in the Mason County uh, zoning actually uh, in the Mason County zoning ordinance. Okay, uh, that seventeen. <laughs> so yeah. seventeen section seventeen is special land use. Seventeen point oh three is agribusiness, and under section seventeen point oh three is agribusiness microbrewery. Um, or winery, or or such, or uh, distillery, maybe. Gotcha. I don't know. But anyways, um, so under the under the standards of that language, it states that you must have a ten acre uh, minimum ten acre parcel. You must farm two acres of that. Act actively farm two acres yeah, of that. I was just gonna say because you're not farming. Right, right. We're not farming. So you're not ag. No, but we're in an ag zoned district. Gotcha. So. And so our property is is ag zoned, um, and 
Uh, then it went into like must have you know all appropriate state licenses and like all that you know all that so stuff. So what right? we need then, to do? Yep, Eric's got it. Actually, is a get great your idea. neighbors yep. to sell you an extra five acres <laughs> of land. I'll grow really crappy crops. <laughs> yeah, they won't be good. They're not going to be good. We can. We can we can plant some hops. Yeah, yeah. we can I do. I planted hops at my house too, and they took over. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. You know, and you know, so so the, the other there were conditions that you know that you know we were ready to meet some conditions, yeah. but there was it was never even offered. So or, my other solution so to this it is, is, what it is you sell me as a crop one yeah. acre of land. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I become your neighbor. <laughs> yeah. I build a pole barn on my property and a giant deck and I just walk over to my neighbor Andy's house and I buy a shit ton of beer <laughs> and I walk it across the line and I just have a little, hey, pitch in. <laughs> Throw some money in the cup. Cornhole ten, tournaments. Cornhole tournaments, 10 bucks a cup to get in. <laughs> and you drink beer. <laughs> Some of that money funnels back across the property line. Yeah. Eh, whatever. Let's circle back real quick. It's a great <laughs> idea. Let's circle back real quick. Were there, were there, were there some things that, 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 that they asked you to do or nope. that you could do? Nope. Nope. There was no, you know, um, with our arguments that we presented to the arguments that we presented to the board, uh, we were, we were uh, able to lease property that uh, was a very close vicinity that would give us 10 acres, but the road made it, you know, makes it not a parcel. The parcel was what they were concerned about. And, I, and let me let me preface this really quick with, I understand that there's zoning, and you know we want to conform to rules. We, uh, you know, the, that's not what we're saying. You know, there's there's no, you know, we're not looking for special treatment. That's not what this is about. Uh, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there because I really don't even like talking about it anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> that went quick. So anyways, anyways, it is, uh, yeah, but there, yeah, there were no con conditions even discussed. Well, I think you should get your tap room. What can we oh, do we help? Oh, we will. Don't we worry. you will. <laughs> we will. We will. And, and more or less, I wanted to also, um, I guess, clarify something that I said yep. um, on, on our Facebook post. So if you read our Facebook post, um, <coughs> the there should be a little clarification on on um, why I said a couple said one of the things was uh, that we are you know that perhaps Mason County wasn't or or won't be the place that where growth you know we love Mason County don't worry Mason County we're not going anywhere but it was more to strike well, just put that out there on for everybody what do you have to leave so. Them? Well, because well, I mean, cause, bottom line is, what if what if you want to grow, and they won't let you grow, which I think is really shitty. God but man, but if you Steve. want to grow, if you if you, <laughs> if, you if you really want to grow and you can't grow there, you got to have a plan B. No, no, we just get creative and we and we God we'll, man, and Steve. we'll get there. But what but what what more of what I'm concerned about that this isn't this is even about starving artists at all. This is about the old guard with. Old, uh, an old mentality, an outdated mentality. If we want to see progress, we want to see small business flourish. This is not about starving artists and their zoning. This is about a, a process that is unnecessarily difficult for anybody to do anything in in our area. So to me, this is a let's fight the fight, not just so we can try to achieve what we're seeking but so we can also make it easier for people that are coming after us because that's that's more of the problem to me you know that's what do you mean by that meaning like so if you wanted to open a brewery in an ag an ag oh, zone district yeah, yeah. Yeah. down the road from me that your process should be easier because we went through this well first honestly, so it's more about the the bigger picture of a, of our area being a place where people want to be that they, if they want to start a business it's easier that we don't that we don't have that old mentality of well this is how it's always been that's the, that's what I'm yeah. that's what I'm fighting. How I hear the same Let's thing. Let's do yep. this one. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think it's time to start sampling some Now that guy had a little bit of power. Yeah, to what do we got here, Andy? All right, so this is Shocky Vibli. Um, <laughs> and this is uh, wheat wine. Uh, what we did it uh, it's a again. 
10 is just a nice round number for me. I really like 10% beers. I don't know what it is. A lot of our beers end up being 10. They it's do. just, it's they're yummy. Um, 10. 10. Yep, 10. <laughs> um, you had that blood forge at 10%. Not 10. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. man. So what we did with this is we brewed it. Uh, the the brewery guys brought over uh, a chocolate that's, uh, they're calling it the fourth chocolate. It's a Swiss-derived chocolate that Apparently, this chocolatier found a cacao bean that's naturally pink. Cacao. <laughs> you just can't help. It. I can't. I can't. Can't. Cacao. <laughs> so, the chocolate is naturally pink. Um, at the time, it was not available in the U.S. So when they brought it over, it's a, it was it's a fairly new chocolate. Nestle, I think it was Nestle, bought the exclusive rights to it. Only sold it in Japan and South Korea in Kit Kat form in the Kit Kat stores. And so I read that. So the chocolate is more berry like yeah. um in nature, you know, but but different than white chocolate, it does have cacao. Cacao <laughs> content. So uh so we did uh so we did that we did that. We did uh in house roasted coffee by our buddy Tom and then um and then we did uh, hundred pounds of Michigan raspberries. In it, Dude, that's so amazing. it's it's uh, pretty. I think it's pretty okay. That's where Have, it came. Again, from. haven't had it in a while, so who knows? We'll see what happens. It's pretty though. Jesus, guys, we're that's one of my. <laughs> we're gonna get in trouble. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna see what happens. It's one of the prettiest. It's easily one of the prettiest beers that we've ever made. I love the color yeah. of this beer. This is sexy yeah, it's gorgeous. So yeah, it's it, it's one it's honestly one of the cheers, guys. Cheers. cheers. Oh, I actually took a sip and man, is that good! Oh, I freaking love this beer. It's one of the most unique beers that we've ever produced by far. It's wild. It's crazy. Man, that's kind of like almost a wine smell. Yeah. To it. Yep. Yeah. All those raspberries mixed yeah. in with the coffee. That is it. So you get it, almost it like the a raspberries. It, it, there's an acidity okay, so to it that almost when, gives it like a pepper character, which when, I think is really fun. When was this bottle? Uh, that was bottled in. August of last year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so, something that I have. I just couldn't remember when I got it. Yep. Because I just go out there and buy things. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Which we appreciate. Thank yeah. you. got more beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. This is a fun beer. I love this. I can't wait to brew with them again. They're coming again so in July. Uh, we're going to do a cherry Man, chocolate so Doppelbach. I want, a, I want a candle that smells like this in my house at all Ooh, times. Yeah. God, I could dig that. so good. I love this beer. God. You know, I, every well, once in a while you have you have you have like all your children, right? Yeah. And you just pick your favorite one. And yeah. you know. I, I love you more. <laughs> Don't so, tell your siblings. It's every <laughs> once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so every once in a while it's nice to, when you get a beer that you're like, okay, that's we set out to do something different and and, and we did here and and it and it really, really good. turned out really good. I have two of these still. And I bet I can sell them. I mean, I, 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 not sell them, but I mean. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> yep. Here we go. E beer eBay? Beer bay? Mm, I'm just, like, I want to just keep them now. Like, I know how good it is. You got to drink it. Well, yeah, eventually. A year from now, mm. we're going to sit down and yeah. I'll bring one of these out. Okay. Just like you brought one of those yep. out. Yep. And, okay. Yep. Yeah, I think this was, I might have one more of these in, the, in my cellar. Um, oh. That's a fun beer, isn't it? Holy it's just, it's just yeah. crazy. It's, the flavors are just wild. Dude, yeah. You got like a kindred spirit right here, man. So like Eric's been in town for a little over a year now. Yeah. We stumbled upon, he stumbled upon your place and it's like, like a kid in a kid. He'll come, he'll come into the store. He'll be like, hey, James. <laughs> Look at what I got. I stopped and saw Andy today. Yep, this one's a secret. <laughs> I like secret beers. They're fun, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Secret beers are the best kind of beers. <laughs> it's like when I went out there for, uh, and you're like, do you want this or this? It was the it was the uh, Irish beers. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And you're like, do you want this or this, or do you want to mix together? And I went, what? So so I brought home a growler of each. Oh, we did, we mixed them here. And though. then we mixed them here when we got here. Yeah. That was a fun that was a fun collaboration. Well, it was a that lot was, of fun yeah. that night too. <laughs> 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 it 
Yeah. I saw the video. Yeah, we were a mess. Yeah, we were a mess. Yeah. Let me ask nice you. Nice kilt. Let me ask you a question, Andy. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, he did get drunk too. Yeah. He said he was getting drunk. He, he got, got drunk. drunk. <laughs> that was not. Yeah. yeah. Take all your beers out of the equation. I want to know what Andy from Starving Artist. I want to know what his favorite beer is. Oh jeez. Ooh. That's not your okay, beer. Okay, there's different. Give me a give me give me a beer that's like in your top ten. My zombie apocalypse beer. What I'm going to be breaking windows for is Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. I like Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. It's just that's this. No I got a special place in my heart for it. It's. It was like the first it's beer the I ever drank. Perfect beer. Like it is. Really. Perfection. Oh, I mean, good beer out there. Like, there's a lot of good beers, yeah. But I'm just saying, like the 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 one that I like, old faithful to me. The one that is like never fails you. Every time you get it, it's perfect. It's like, you know, people need to give more credit to these old school breweries. Hell yeah, like not enough people. Everybody's worried about what the next trend is. Like, what about these guys who, like, made this possible? Started it. Like, dude, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale is my favorite beer of all time still. Like and I mean, there's beers that I like. There's beers that I would I would that are fascinating, more fascinating to me, or like, but like, the, well, it's they, just my it's my go to. They cycle you know, it out. Like you yep, have beers right, that you cycle right. it and out. Yep. But if and there's you're some like, people who are making some amazing beers. Yeah. Amazing beers. Yourself. But right. you. Yeah. And but, I think I'm I'm thinking okay. Yeah. We'll get to amazing. It's just gonna take me a couple more years. <laughs> Dude, you're making, Give me time. You're making Give me time. beer that's I'm gonna, better than I'm going to blow people's lot. minds. I that just need, lager, I need time. That lager. You, that, I would take this beer right here, and I would put it up with against any other blood orange. Oh, easily. We've been told that. Easily. Yeah, that it's one of the better blood orange beers out there. It, it's, it is the best. Thank you. Easily. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, come on, dude. Like, how many beers do you think I've drank in my life? Well, how many beers do you think I've drank in my life? <laughs> more than, okay, the, more than a couple. That's a lot. This is, this is. <laughs> it's I still, mean, it's still our number one. Yep. It's still our number and, one. And, and it's, and it's 10% and it's, it's flavorful. And it drinks like and it's a beer mosa. It drinks like and, it's yeah. a, a 4%. <laughs> right. And I've got old timers that don't drink craft beer. They come in the store and they're asking me, hey, when's that orange? That orange beer. Really? Yeah. Where's that orange beer from the guy from uh, down by Ludington? Where's that orange beer at? Is yeah. it coming? Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. Um, All the time, I, dude. I didn't have time. What's going to be funny is the stuff you're going to get next next week, I think. Yep. Um, you get 12-ounce cans. I have not even sold a 12-ounce can in the brewery yet. So, nice. yes, we're until until we run out of pint cans, this is all you're going to get at the brewery. If you want 12-ounce cans... You gotta come here or another retail outlet that's getting them. So, yeah, yeah. so, yeah. Are excited so they're about 12 ounce cans. I'm like pumped about it. And, um, but yeah, I mean, then there's, I mean, I've got my other favorites. I love, like, of course, the, the tre like trending breweries. I love, you know, Treehouse. You know, they make amazing beer. Hill Farmstead, that's really I'm who I'm familiar I've, with. Hill Farmstead. I'm not, I'm not, I gotta be honest, I'm not. <laughs> no, neither is Eric. What? Well, I don't no. know where it is. Where is it? Come on, spit some Ouch. juice. Let us know, bro. Rate beer has rated them the number one brewery in the world at least two years running. No. They are amazing. There's never any beer that I've ever had from them that is less than perfect. Where are you getting them from? Well, friends. Yeah, see, there's, there's that. <laughs> yeah. There's um, that. They're, they're a brewery in Vermont, and they are the real deal. Every, everything he makes is perfect. Well, that yeah, needs so, to start yeah, selling in Michigan. To, so, yeah. whatever, yeah, dude. I don't think, I don't think that's going to happen anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's but, that. But, no, I mean, as far as, like, Michigan shout-outs, like, I, I love Speciation, which you need to get Mitch up here. I told him to come visit you. That'd be cool. Um, speciation is killing it. Um, I love Transient. Those transient. guys. Transient. Oh, shit. man, they're making great beer. Well, then, why don't we have a Transient beer real quick? Okay. Oh, my. <laughs> Why don't we just go ahead and do that? Okay. Because I have a refrigerator. <laughs> oh, what's this? Where did that oh come my! From? What is that? So is that Buckley Lights that I see? So if we're gonna do this. I gotta give a shout out to my boy okay. Jim King. So Jim, thank you for the beer trade. I'm gonna run. You guys want to finish your glasses? I'll go wash them out. You guys can chit chat, and then I'll be right back. Oh, it's not Buckley Light. It's actually sure. Buckley. That's funny. Well, I mean, it's 
just make some beer on top of beer. Yeah. I got tiny glasses. Eric's gotta go to the bathroom. I got tiny cups. You got tiny cups? I can't pee in tiny cups. <laughs> I can. Yes, you can. How many cups you got? A lot. <laughs> no, you can. I know, but oh. I'm still gonna oh, take I'm the glass. Sorry. I'm not gonna rinse the glass out wide and then wow. 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 Oh my goodness. Oh man. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, thanks for being here, dude. Thanks for waiting around for me. Started it. at 5, then it was 6, then it was 6.30. Right. That Sierra Nevada call was a good call, man. I, I, I just feel like when, years ago, they, they, they deserve way more respect from beer geeks right now. Yeah. I used to sell that beer, and I sold that beer in like 2000. And it was like my, it was my craft beer. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, sure. you need a craft beer. This, this beer, is the one. This is the one you got to have. I mean, that yep. was, you know, almost 20 years ago. It was always at the bottom of the beer cooler in a bar. <laughs> and you had to be that guy that drank it. You and know, you were drinking like, old Sierra Nevada. Old <laughs> Sierra Nevada, dude. Old. Yep. And I can remember when the craft beer market started to, like when founders came on board and yep. then New Holland came. They were kind of all in the same time frame there. Peddling those beers back in the day was a struggle. And then like in the last, you know, five years or so, it's just, it's, in this area, in other states, craft beer has been growing like exponentially. You know, brewers, breweries like Shorts Brewing Company here, that's yeah, really sure. grown statewide. Sure. Just starting yeah, to get out, out of the state. I mean, that's my, my go-to is Huma. Today, my go-to is Huma. I really like Huma. You know, I love you, Joe. I love your mustache. <laughs> He's got a sweet mustache. I I just, it's Go not ahead. my flavor. Oh yeah, uh, no, Joe, Joe's got a great product, a great brand. Just not a, not, not my flavor. Yeah, that's For all whatever right. reason. That's I, fine, I, you know, that's my apocalypse great, beer. Yeah, no, he's a great guy, like great, great brand. I love, I love everything about him. Just, uh oh. Do you find yourself, do, do you venture out and go to like, hey, I'm gonna take off and go to whatever brewery. Go check out these guys. Usually, I mean, go check if out we're, these guys. I don't venture out much. I, I like a solo brewer. brewer. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> When I do, no, anywhere we're going, we we literally always look for uh, a brewery anywhere we go, no matter yeah. where we are. Okay, yeah. so uh -oh. when you go there, yeah. do you tell them who you are? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, dude, no, I'm not that no, guy. No, dude. I'm not that guy. <laughs> no, like, you know, every once in a while it's like, hey, do I know you? Like, yeah, you probably do, because, you know, we, we brewed here. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. Like, oh, cool, you know, because I have, but my, I just don't, I have don't my like, starving I, artist hat on, my yeah, starving artist t-shirt yeah. on. My I'm jeans, sorry, my jeans my, shirt and jean jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please come out with starving artist jean jackets? Be the oh my God, thing first of all, apparently yes. windbreakers yes. are on. Yes, on the jean jacket. I had a <laughs> jean jacket in Can we put fourth grade that had the Def Leppard Hysteria yes. album yes. cover on the back of it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Some prick. Stole it from me, and if I find you, if I oh, find that's, you, yeah, that's not cool, man. Jacket's not gonna fit, but I'll make it fit. Yep. That's not cool. That was hundred. I was gonna say if we could put ago. like spikes on it yes. and like old punk patches, you know, then yeah. like yeah, that would Absolutely. be that would be cool. Like Thunderdome. Yeah, yeah. Like Mad Max. Yeah. The... Like you're not. Yeah, gonna... big spikes, like Guar spikes. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> That'll be the starving artist jacket yes. with guar spikes. No sleeves. <laughs> I gotta have sleeves. <laughs> have sleeves. Tapered. Oh, good God. Do you peg your jeans too? No. No, but so I had I had somebody walk in the store the other day with the, the penny roll thing. Like, what are you trying to do, really? The 80s are they're back, whether we like it or not. I did really like on the ladies, the tight stonewash with the aquanet really high, hairspray there. What about the shark bite t-shirts? Remember those? I do remember those. Shark bite, like, like where it was like all ripped and like kind of yeah. bloody yeah. right there, and it was like shark bite. Yeah, those were cool. Remember the shirts that you that you touch? Oh color. yeah, I forgot about those. Hyper color. Hyper color. Flashback back to the eighties. Yep. MC Hammer pants. I did. I wore them. You know what I also wore? Uh, the like the boys to men the bibs with one flap down. <laughs> Bring it, bitches. It was hot. Everybody loved it. I had it. a mullet with a spike. I bet you did. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I totally oh, did. Oh, and it was business. Oh, yeah. I lived in Missouri, though, though, so you got it like that. <laughs> Missouri? Missouri. Missouri. Uh, misery. <laughs> Missouri. <laughs> Sorry, Missouri. Right. Well, is there shopping. anything that's else so that you want to tell the... Wow. This is a yeah. good beer, too. Yeah, this is a different level. Transient is one of the better breweries in the state of Michigan. Wow, that's good. Have you ever been to a brewery, walked in there, tasted their beer, and went, Me? Meh. Who beer's crap? Unfortunately, too many times. We'll keep names off the... Yeah, like, yeah, we're not going to It doesn't do matter. That. We're not going to do But yeah, when we, tra when we travel, yeah. Yeah, every once in a while. Um, every once in a while when we're traveling, I'll walk in and be like, wow. Do you want to get, just, like... Did, like did you ever, like... Want to give them pointers? No, but one time I, I did ask a, I did ask one of the owners if he knew that his beer was contaminated. That, that's a thing, dude. Like, that's a thing, I, dude. Like, right. That's no, a thing, it was, dude. I'm not trying to be mean, but it's like, a, do you, you taste do, it? 